Good afternoon, everyone. I trust everyone is doing well and staying safe during this quarantine period. I have the honor of having a discussion today with legendary radio personality, PJ Butta. And thank you, PJ, for, for joining me today. You're welcome. I don't know about legendary, but uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan. I've been a huge fan of yours for many, many years. Uh, I listen to K-Day on a consistent basis and actually uh, listening to you on the radio as I sit in an hour and a half to two hours of traffic uh, every day when I was commuting. So, hey, I appreciate the entertainments. Yeah, not anymore, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, not right now. Not right now. Hopefully, hopefully in the fall or in the spring. So yes, I appreciate yes. everything. No problem. Um, so let me just get into, you know, how this discussion relates to sociology. So for my students who are in my introduction to sociology class, uh, we've already discussed the sociological perspective, essentially, this idea that you go into new situations uh, with a beginner's mind, you live present in the moments, um, you go in with a blank canvas, and you allow the interaction to paint a picture for you. Well, that's exactly the purpose of this discussion today. This idea that we want to gain an understanding of who PJ Butta is and what were those foundational values or goals that you had established early on in your life. So if we can dig into the first question. Uh, so where did you grow up? I grew up in San Diego, California. Yeah, oh, very so, nice. Uh, yeah, you know, two hours south of Los Angeles. Yeah, so, so what brought you over to the L.A. area? I was actually college. So, uh, you know, after high school, I was looking for colleges to go to. Um, you know, I was, USC was one of the colleges I was looking at, uh, Loyola Marymount and uh, San Diego State. But I, I, and I didn't want to go to community college because community college, I felt, was like just being in high school again. I just wanted to, you know, get that college experience. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, I didn't get accepted to USC. I uh, didn't get accepted to Loyola, Loyola Marymount. And I did get accepted to San Diego State. But at that time, the broadcasting program was impacted, so it took me like six years to graduate. So I got this letter from uh, a college I never heard of called University of Laverne, you know, and I'm like, what is this? Like, I have to do with like Laverne and Shirley? I had no idea what this college was about, but they had a broadcasting program there. Uh, and they said, you know, come check it out. So I jumped on the Greyhound, checked it out, and uh, fell in love with it. And then I ended up, that's how I ended up in, in LA. And then after college, just remained in Los Angeles. So when you were at University of Laverne, did you study communications? And what drew you to communications as a major, if that's what you well, studied? Yeah, I mean, well, initially what I wanted to do when I was uh, in high school, I wanted to be involved in the music industry. And, and uh, but I didn't play any instruments. Uh, I wasn't an artist. I wasn't a you know, musician or singer or rapper. But I wanted to be what was called A&R, which is, uh, stands for Artist Repertoire, and basically the talent scouts. These are the guys that sign acts. Um, so that's what I was looking for. But at the time, there really wasn't any music business-related colleges. You know, now, now there's more than a few, but back then there, there wasn't. Um, so I was thinking, what's the closest thing I could major in that's similar to what I want to do? And it was either music, but I don't play instruments, or radio broadcasting. Uh, so that's why I was like, okay, let me do radio broadcasting because that's still in the music industry and I'm dealing with artists. Uh, and then, you know, maybe I could just use that as a foot in my door to get into the record industry. Uh, and that's, that's how I got into radio. I, I kind of knew that's what I wanted. Well, at least I knew I wanted to be in music. I didn't know I was going to be in radio and it's as long as I have been. Wow. So when you're at Laverne, uh, were you on the local, uh, you know, university radio station or... Were you involved with, you know, DJing at parties or any of that type of fun stuff? Yeah, I was, ironically, I was never a DJ, the chicka 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 uh, turntablist. Uh, I always wanted to, but my mom couldn't afford the equipment. So when I got to the University of Vermont, one of the great things that kind of drew me there was their radio station allowed you, or the radio program allowed you to be on the air your freshman year, while other colleges like UCLA, USC, you had to wait junior, senior year. But Laverne was like, yo, freshman year, you could be on the radio. Um, so I got involved my first year on the radio. It was, uh, <laughs> it was very nervous uh, for someone. And here, here's, here's something. Uh, I'm kind of like an oxymoron, meaning that I'm on the radio. I get paid to talk, but I don't like to talk. So it was, it was amazing to my friends growing up back home. It's like, how are you on the radio when you never talked as, as a kid? <laughs> so you can imagine my first time on the air at my college radio station. I'm like, oh, I got to talk now. Oh, what did I say? So literally, I talked as, as less as I could 
Uh, I remember that first day, it was like uh, the station was uh, 55 KUOV. It was an AM, it was on 550 AM. So I just go, 55 KUOV, this is PJ, and here's uh, House of Painter Brown. And that was it. I was, I was in and out. I was frightened. Uh, it was called Mike Fright, and that's, that's what I had. But, uh, you know, luckily, the, the benefit of being on my freshman year, it allowed me by the time I was a senior or junior, I already was over that Mike Fright, over those butterflies, uh, and had experience to uh, continue on and, and make it a career. Yeah, so uh, when you're on the radio at Laverne, um, were you PJ Butta at that time? And how did that no. name come about? No, I wasn't. I was, I mean, PJ is my real name. Okay. I've always been called that my, my whole life. Uh, and so when I was doing college, it was still PJ. And then there was, at least in college, there was kind of like a nickname. It was uh, PJ the Love Sponge. <laughs> Just because there was, uh, at the time, there was a DJ called Bubba the Love Sponge. And somehow, yes. I don't know how I got attached to that name. Uh, but then when I got an internship while I was in college at a station called 92.3 The Beat, which is no longer around. And it was, a, it was an R&B, an urban station, R&B station that played a little bit of hip hop. Uh, so my internship was being uh, in promotions on the, what is called a street team. So we would be the ones uh, that would basically take the station vans or go to station events and give away stickers and T-shirts and keychains. And I, this is kind of dating myself, but the street team concept was kind of brand new. We were like the first street team, organized radio street team in Los Angeles at the time. And we called ourselves the Beat Street Team. And everyone had like these cool names. We had a guy, his name is Cornelius. They called him Corn Dog. We had a guy named Phil. They called him Phil the Thrill. Uh, we had a guy named Paul, but he went by P Funk. We had a girl. Uh, her name was Cheesecake. And you, you, there was almost like a lot of people had like food names. So then when it came to me, I was like, I don't know. I'm just PJ. Like, eh, you know, you got to have something else to it. So there was a DJ on the time. What we would do is, as street team members, we'd go into the studio and whoever was on the air, we'd promote like where we're going to be at. So be like, hey, uh, this is PJ. We're going to be out in Pomona, uh, you know, at the in and out on Gary. Come out and see me. You know, you know I got T-shirts, stickers, blah, blah, blah. So the DJ, his name was Captain G, rest in peace, was like, hey, you have a smooth voice like Butter. I'm going to call you Butter. So, so that's how I got stuck with uh, PJ Butter. And at the time, it was kind of like slang for dope or something that was really good. Uh, and then, you know, it, it was kind of memorable because it sounds like peanut butter. Uh, so that's how I kind of got stuck with uh, PJ Butter, and that's how I got the name. Well, that's really cool. It has nothing to do with me. I love peanut butter, but it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> now, um, a lot of students, as they're navigating the waters of community college or even four-year university, one of the thoughts that they may have is to pursue an internship opportunity. And you talked about how you interned uh, at this radio station, 92.3, and I remember it uh, growing up. Um, can you talk about the value of doing an internship while you're in college and how has that affected your career today? Oh, it's very important. Um, you know, it's something I tell my students, I'm also a college professor at Mount Sac. So I always say that internship is very important for the simple fact that one, uh, you're learning on the job. So sometimes what we're teaching you in the classroom, you get to see uh, in real life. And that was my case when I was in college, I was learning stuff that I didn't learn in school or was seeing being implemented in real time and in real life and seeing with my own eyes. Um, but the most important part about internships is, you know, this business or just basically with anything, it's always about networking connections. It's just usually not about how much experience you got or what your grade point average was. It's really uh, who you know, and you always want to build your network. So the cool thing about the internship, I was meeting other college students who wanted to be in radio, uh, as well as meeting people who are already in radio. So I was kind of building my network base and that's why I always stress that uh, internships are very important because it leads you to jobs. And for me, my internship was uh, lasted a semester, which was a fall semester of 93 was my uh, internship. So when it was done, they actually hired me. So now I got paid. I was an employee of the radio station after that semester. Uh, so it, it can it lead to a job. And for me, basically, it's, uh, when I think about it, my whole career has just been just a, a long internship that hasn't ended. You know, it's been like 27 years now. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah. So, so you go to Laverne, you earn your degree from Laverne. You've been, you have an internship that leads to a job at the radio station. At what point do you become a regular on air? That well, how my story, how I became on air is kind of not how it really happens in real life. Usually this is the pathway to being on radio. You know, you go to college or you get some type of 
trade experience. Uh, and then you apply for a job by sending out demo tapes, they're called air checks. And usually you send them out to small towns, small markets. So you'd send it out to like a Palm Springs or a Lancaster or, you know, some hick town in Iowa or something like that. And then you work your way up almost like a, a baseball minor league system. You start out in a small town and work your way to the big leagues. But for me, it was different. Uh, so from that period of my internship, getting hired three months later, I was on the air within a year, which is unheard of. Um, and you know, that was just simply by luck, but luck is just being prepared for when the opportunity comes. And luckily I was prepared from doing college radio already and already being in the work environment of a radio station, knowing how it operates. Now, what was that first experience like being okay. on the air, you know, on live radio that's being streamed to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, as opposed to, you know, being on the air at Laverne where you're hoping students are tuning in. Uh, you know, it, it was, uh, I think it, it was the same as my first day in college. Really, like, oh, shit. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can cuss. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, now I got to talk. Before, uh, when I was in college radio, I was scared when just, like, I had one person listening, and that just had to be the mailroom person who was next door to the radio station. And now I got, like, millions of, you know, people in Los Angeles listening. And mind you, this is before social media. So everyone, this, like, radio was social media. It's where you got your news and your music from first. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of kind of scary, <laughs> but uh, like anything, you know, you 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 go through your bumps and bruises and experience that makes you better. Um, so yeah, so that was a it was it was a rough time, but I got through it. Luckily, I'm still here. Obviously, I did a good job. I'm still here. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you you've had a, a a very long radio career, and like I said, I'm a huge fan um, of you. Now, as a radio personality, if you can think of maybe one or two experiences that have just been like, wow, you know, I've made it to the big time. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had any of those experiences? Did you meet, you know, your childhood hero or someone that you were a huge fan of uh, while think, in the industry? I think the first time was just getting my first job when I, when I finally, when I first got that first paycheck, uh, that full-time paycheck, not the hourly. And I was like, wow, finally made, <laughs> I made it. Yeah. Uh, so that was definitely a, a great moment. Uh, another moment when you're talking about childhood, uh, you know, for me, like people always ask me like, oh, who's your favorite artist or who's your favorite interview or who have you met? You know, I've met so many people and I just, I really don't remember who I've met sometimes, but I do remember, usually the people I do remember is, is someone who affected me or had an effect in my life as growing up, you know, musically especially. And uh, for me, it was uh, Teddy Riley, who was a great producer, was a member of the group Guy. Uh, and I remember Guy came in and I had an interview. So I was just so excited. I was like, yo, Guy, my favorite group ever. And then what even made it even cooler was after the interview was done, Teddy Ryan was like, hey, you know a place where I can get hats? I'm like, oh yeah, come on, I'll take you to go get some hats. And we actually went to a, a it's called Dick's now, but before it was Chicks uh, in Pasadena. So we went over there to get some hats. Then afterwards, uh, we were at my house just playing like Dreamcast at the time, uh, oh. NFL 2K though. So we're just playing, I'm just sitting there. I remember one moment I'm sitting there playing, you know, this NFL 2K, you know, 2K video game against Teddy Riley. I'm like, damn, I'm sitting playing video games with Teddy Riley, and I'm kicking his ass, which is even better. So, uh, <laughs> so it's moments like those. And then when, when people that you wouldn't expect listen to you, come up to you, uh, like, uh, you know, James Worthy from the Lakers or something. Uh, or even the fact that, you know, I, I was also did some TV uh, and is based on just, you know, producers and TV execs listening to my show and having an idea uh, you know, one, one show was a uh, Moesha, which Brandy was on back like 96 and they wrote an episode based on me and I had to play myself and it was just based on me giving away tickets to, uh, this big concert, this summer jam, which was the same thing we did at the beat at the time. So they made a show based on me, which was, was kind of cool. That's cool. I remember that episode actually. I was a huge fan of that show. Uh, so that, that's awesome. Now, what's the secret to having longevity in this industry? Because you see people come and go and they'll go from a large market to a small market and then they virtually disappear. It seems like your career has been fairly steady. It has, you know, it's been fairly steady. It hasn't, it hasn't been like, uh, at least for me, I always think of this, like what I wanted my career to be like where I'm super like star studded celebrity, you know, a list or would I want a steady career? Uh, so for me, that's been the, uh, I think I've, I've had that steady career of longevity. And I think, at least for me, uh, it's just been just kind of like my character traits of being dependable, 
uh, you know, just being a good worker, solid worker, doing good work, uh, and not being a headache. <laughs> you know, I really don't have an ego. Uh, so that's been the, the, the thing for me. Oh, that's great. So uh, we, you mentioned before you're a professor at Mount San Antonio College. And for those of us who know Mount uh, Sac, right, mm -hmm. it's a great, great college. How, how do you go from being a radio personality and continuing to be a radio personality to now also adding to your resume uh, a professor of radio at Mount Sac? Well, you know, teaching was always something I wanted to do. I was wanted to give back in that way. So uh, I was blessed to have an opportunity where I was a guest speaker, kind of like now, uh, at Mount San Antonio College. So then afterwards, the uh, uh, professor was like, you ever want to do teach? And I was like, yeah, yeah, eventually when I'm done with this career. And like, no, you want to teach like next semester? I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> so that, yeah, that, that's how I got thrown into that. Uh, and it's been kind of a cool experience uh, for me and the students just to, because I didn't really have, you know, professors who were working currently in the industry. And I, I, you know, I think of myself when I was a student, uh, you know, in my classroom, like, yo, I got my professor was actually on the radio. So it's kind of leads to more of a, gives more credibility to what I'm saying. Like, okay, this guy is really still working. So I should listen uh, to what he's saying. And it's, it's been, it's, it's my favorite thing to do. I, I love teaching. And you've been teaching for a minute, correct? It, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. I've been teaching since uh, 05. So uh, what is that now? 15 wow. years? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. You know, what I thought was so cool is I Googled you, right? Oh, Granted, oh. I, I, I know who you are and all that kind of stuff, but I Googled you and I saw your rate my professor and you have to be the only professor who their rate my professor is their nickname. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. You know, usually you see the government name, right? And yeah. it's PJ Butter right there. And, and you have very, very high marks on, yeah. on rate my professor. Yeah. Well, initially what they did was when, uh, when I started, they, they just put my on-air name for the simple fact, which is smart, because yeah. they can attract students like, oh, you know, this, oh, that's the guys on the radio. Uh, but now they've been putting my government name. So they so people are more surprised when I tell them who I am. Like, oh, my God, you. I would have never known. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was so cool. Now, um, I have a number of students, even though I teach sociology, who are interested in communications, who are interested in radio. Uh, what recommendations would you provide them uh, to get into that industry? Uh, you know, the good thing nowadays is that you don't really need a uh, professional studio, you know, with technology, you know, you just need a laptop and a microphone and you can just do your own radio show. So, uh, you know, don't be, feel like, oh, I have to be on the radio to do radio. You have other platforms to do it. So just, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. You know, uh, Malcolm Gladwell always says, you know, put in 10,000 hours so you could be, uh, you know, be a master at your craft and do that, you know, take this time or take time to just practice and practice. You know, I did that before I was on the radio. I'd make like these fake radio shows on cassette tapes for my friends back home. Uh, so that was kind of like my training. Uh, so, you know, once you do that and, uh, you know, put something together, but more importantly, it's media is about personality. You can't be boring. It's not about the voice anymore. So it's all about personality. If you got a great personality uh, and that shows on the audio, then, uh, you know, that you put together, you know, you put this, I always say tape because I'm old school, but you know, you put this MP3 together <laughs> and then you send it out to these, these radio stations. You send it out to what is called a program director. He's the boss uh, that runs the radio station uh, along with their resume and cover letter. And uh, hopefully you get put on if that's what you want to do to be at a real terrestrial radio station. But again, like I said, there's so many platforms at YouTube and if you want to do like radio video with the IG lives and stuff like that. You, you have more opportunities than when I was in college. We just had, hey, you just have radio. That's it. Um, so don't, don't, don't feel like that's the only option you have. Yeah, definitely. Now, I want to thank you for your time and, and your willingness to connect with my students and share, you know, a bit of information about your background. Now, one of the things that I really like uh, about you as a fan is that even with everything going on right now with COVID-19 and the fact that you're on the radio, I think your time on the radio has just been extended as well, right? You yes. Uh -huh. Like four hours to eight hours or something like that. You still have, is it the nightcap? Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's an IG live show that just, uh, you know what? It just happened organically. It was, you know, during, everyone's stuck at home, you know, the stay at home and the pandemic and everyone's quarantined. And the first one that really, you know, started doing this was D-Nice. So D-Nice was doing this, his IG live, just playing music for friends. And I thought, oh, so that's kind of cool, you know? Uh, so what I wanted to do was, I know growing up for me, I'd always go to sleep listening to like slow jams, you know, the R&B songs. I was like, you know, why not do that? I'm sure there's people like that that want to unwind at the end of the day. 
So I said, I'm going to just jump on and play a couple slow jams at night. So I did that one night. And then people were like, yo, can you do it again tomorrow? I, it was really supposed to be like one thing, just a one-off thing. I was like, okay, I'll come, I'll come back tomorrow. And then tomorrow turned into the next day and then turned into weeks. And now it's been past two months uh, and it's been growing. And I also looked at it as, okay, well, let me take this as an opportunity not only to, you know, help people, uh, whether it's be sleeping or just forgetting about what's going on in the world, uh, but also to maybe help other people by raising money. So I, I also made it a, a charity type of event uh, where every week we raise money for different charities. Yeah, I've been seeing, you know, when you post photos on Instagram and all that, and I mean, you're, you're getting some nice fundraising dollars. Yeah. And, oh, and, and donating and, to and, so many and, charities. And the other cool thing is that I get to uh, interview like uh, artists that I, I grew up listening to and love. So that's the, the other, at least the benefit for me. That's my reward for me too. <laughs> yeah. that, that's great. Now, if you don't mind plugging, um, you know, if it's an Instagram page, Facebook page, so that if my students uh, want to get in contact with you or they want to, you know, check out uh, the nightcap or whatever, where can they find you? I'm sure your students don't use Facebook anymore, by the way. But um, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you want to give them your MySpace page too? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, you can follow me at PJ Butter at PJ B U T T A. That's on Instagram. That's on Twitter. Uh, and if you are on Facebook, it's uh, DJ PJ Butter. So DJ PJ uh, B U T T A. And uh, if you're still on MySpace, I'm not on there. But uh, it, <laughs> well, you know, they- if you're on Friendster, uh, AL chat room. Uh, you can find me at. No. Yeah, exactly. That, that's going back, you know, old school days, right? Oh, yeah. Just, just like, what? AOL, what? What is that? What? Oh, yeah, I- exactly. I mean, there, there's times uh, where I'm talking about, you know, I, I use Young Jeezy as an example in my classes. And a lot of my students are like, who's Young Jeezy? Already, right? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I mean, Young Jeezy came out when I was in college. And now I have to go back. I'm like, oh, man, I am getting old. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, if they don't know who Young Jeezy is, I mean. If you think that's bad, you see the references I give my students. They're like, who? LL Cool J? Who's that? Who's that? Yeah. You know that? You're like Fresh Prince. It's like, oh, oh, Will Smith, the actor. Oh, yeah, we know. He, what you, he was a prince before? Yeah. From what country? <laughs> no, he's a rap man. He's a rapper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, and, 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 you know, this will be truly beneficial to my students. And um, I'll share this with my, on my Canvas sites, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, now making that transition online education and uh but thank you again i appreciate it you're welcome thank you thanks